Joe, how are you? Good, thank you. All right, well, uh, just finished the last uh, road trip of the, of the preseason. What did you yeah. take away from those two games, those three days, as you prepare for the last one tomorrow? You know, it's, we're still in that point where we're getting to know the new players. We have a really strong idea of what our returning players should like, like when they're at their best. But uh, I think they've defined themselves each game. They kind of give you another look, another layer. So we'll continue that one more tomorrow night. And then, as everybody will have to do, make some tough decisions. Does the last preseason game have any kind of a different feel than the other ones? Oh, I think light at the end of the tunnel for a bunch of guys, right? Um, you know what, the, you're at different levels of mental readiness. There are guys who feel ready to go that would much rather start the season today. And then you have guys that, and I get around to a number of the veteran players, I don't really need to see them in the game. It's do they need it? Do they feel they need it? Then you get more guys going, yeah, I need one more. So there's, the guys seemingly like to play exhibition games here probably better than the practices. So um, if you develop a relationship with your players, especially the older guys that you trust their read, uh, I will uh, I will check in with them and most of them want to play, so they play. Uh, do you have an update on Sam Bennett? Uh, he'll get a better look. We we'll get him looked at this afternoon, so nothing. I mean, he walked in and he walked out last night, so but he's got to get checked out today, so I'll have nothing. Are there yeah. too many preseason games? Oh, I don't know the answer to that. The the I, I'm gonna say no. I mean, I, everybody will tell you we could do this in about ten days. We could hit three preseason games, but you don't get to look at your kid, your young players. You don't and. They need to go through the process, right? They get into an exhibition game, they feel pretty good, they think they're right there. Then the next year they get one toward the end and those games are different and then the regular season is completely different and it's not even close to the playoffs. So even with this, it's not real. But yeah, let's play three and go for sure, right? But it's not fair. You need to get those kids in the game. So the way we did it is everybody played the first in the double header, then the kids played all three and then the veterans came back in. So. I think one more is good for us. But doesn't it mean, and I know the adage, a guy could get hurt crossing the street, I get that. But when you lose a player, or could lose a player in a game that doesn't count, doesn't that just, it just eats that at is, you that is, that is uh, an unavoidable risk in the nature of our profession. You cannot play at your peak, bubble wrapped. You've got to get into the fight, and you are at risk every time you do that. So I don't think about it. I. I it's about, so you've got to be prepared to push hard, be ready. It's far more painful to lose a guy in playoffs than it is in an exhibition game because you still got time to recover. Uh, there were a couple tough decisions announced today. Um, I mean, what, what went into the decision to send Grigory Denisenko down? Just his camp. So he was good. He wasn't bad. He wasn't great. And he came off injury, and I don't have him in the opening night roster. So it's kind of like when you get to the point that I'm, comfortable that you're not getting into the opening eight roster, then you need to get back to that team and get into some games. And then Spencer Knight also got sent down. Is it just yeah. important to get him into the games? As he's getting yeah, the, the this was really, uh, it wasn't a training camp decision. This was something that we looked at from the start. He's, um, God made great progress in his program. He feels good. He looked fantastic in training camp. But we need to put him in kind of a number one position, a number one role, and then run his program and, and work on what he's working on. But it's, it's been good. So he was, he was well aware of it. We didn't say it was for sure going to happen. We just, there was definitely a plan for it to happen. Um, Stolers has come in and been real good. Bob's got the net for sure. So we, he's got games that he can play. He's looking forward to getting into that kind of rhythm. And, but we're very, very, I'm very, very pleased with his training camp. He looked good. Does it make that decision any easier knowing that Bob's unlike a lot of starters and that he would play 82 if you let him? It, well, the, we've got two guys in here that can stop pucks and play. So um, I think we would have been making that decision anyway. Because what's best for Spencer Knight right now is also what's best for the Florida Panthers long term. He, he looked good in camp. We want to keep that going. Um, yeah, so I think we're in good shape there. What do you notice from Mackie and sorry, guys? What do you notice from Mackie and sort of now is we're down to thirty, they're still here. Do you kind of notice yeah. a little extra jump from them making it this far? No, I think I've worn them right out. I think <laughs> both those guys now. I mean, I'm not sure. I, I had uh, Justin out in a game, but Mackie's played three rookie games. He's got the hell beat out of him for five days, like the rest of them, and he's he's closing in on what seven games in fourteen days. So um, he may not play them all, but I've liked his camp. He's in a good spot right now. We've got a couple of Nick guys up front, so 
who knows, you may make it. Coach, I'm sorry if you've already answered this question a million times, but just curious, in your second season, how is the complexion of this training camp and this preseason maybe a little bit different than last Yeah, season? well, a lot of, there's an awful lot of differences. Not, it's not just the 50 guys on the ice you had to learn. It's all of you and it's management. I mean, there's 150 people that you got to learn their names, try to run camp, try to move, unpack boxes. And so that's all different. You come in, you're um, in a better position with that. What was good about camp, last year's camp was very, very difficult and we can measure that. And then we ran the same drills this year and basically the same practices, but this camp was harder than last year by the load and that's their work ethic. So like, you can only scream so loud, right? Um, but they were able to go harder in this camp in the same uh, context as last year. So that's a really good sign. Go so we're, oh, I wasn't going to say anything <laughs> smart after that. That was as close as I was getting to smart. So you're good. Mackie? Yes. I thought you said Matthew. Okay. Especially at such a young well, the hands are there. Like he's got he he, the hands and the shot are there, and you've got to give young players to to use them, room to use them. But you also know that the game is going to change, right? So he's going to end up playing a completely different style of game that we play, but also the NHL game so much faster. So you've, we're, I think he's done a good job of showing his hands, but not over showing them. He hasn't completely relied on it. Like the, the, an elite player's great confidence shows itself by the plays they don't make. I mean, I know they hit the highlights and they're amazing bar down passes to it, but it's the ones they cut off that they don't use because they've got lots of confidence. It's not the right time. It's not the right play. I don't need to force it. Young players come in and they want to show it to you every single time they touch the puck, which is a dangerous thing to do in our league. He's done a good job with that balance. I don't, just a continuation from last year. I mean, I was, I was surprised with his personality last year. He was in Calgary, I was in Winnipeg. We don't like each other very much. I thought there's a chance that the guy on the ice was the guy off the ice, and it's not. I mean, he, as talented as he is, it's actually kind of his humility, the way he treats the people around him, the way he treats his teammates. I mean, he's a good human. Um, and he's and he's consistent with that daily. So he had a big year and he got a lot of press coverage. It hasn't changed one bit, right? He's still hard work and respectful, has fun with his teammates. He's a big part of our culture here. We've got a whole bunch of unique guys, unusual personalities. And I mean that, like I've been in a lot of locker rooms. There's a good story in every stall, funny, Quirky, uh, some tough men in there too, but all of them good stories, and and he's one of them. He's an elite athlete with an incredible set of hands, and he has. I can't believe I'm going to say it. It's, it's almost like he has no ego, but but he does, right? He's, he's driven. He wants the puck, and uh, in the big times, you can feel it, you can see it. But in terms of relating to his teammates. He's one of 13 forwards, you know, one of 23 guys. And so is Barkov, right? Whether, whether that's what Matthew brought into our room, I certainly know it was already in our room with Barkov, feeds off each other, how it, and then that means there's nobody else exalting themselves in that room when those two guys are just like everybody else. Only in so far as it would allow them to play faster. Our systems are, we work really, really hard at keeping our systems as simple as possible to the almost elemental phase so that we can go as fast as we can. We don't want a lot of rules. We just want the rules that we have, we adhere to them hard. And that's everybody. So if a player knows the system better, he should be able to play faster. That's the edge. But you can watch a game and say that guy doesn't fully understand our system. You can teach it. That, you know, you can teach it in a week, two weeks. They'll get it. It's, and that's true for young players. Um, so if, if it makes them faster, then they would have an edge. You've had a good look at Stephen Lawrence alongside Lomberg and Cousins. I mean, what do you like about his, his what he brings uh, to that line? There's a bit of culture there. Like, he's a yapper and a chirper and a, and a 
smiling energy guy, so he's talking on the bench. Those things matter. They matter to our group. We're somewhat unique in that is that when it's quiet, it's not good. Um, so we, we've got, uh, he brings that. I like that. I haven't seen enough of him, whether, we're, whether it's in the middle or wing. I thought Stenlin came a, had a big jump forward there last night, but I do like, like the size of them. Lombard will get heavy into the corners, but those guys can control some pucks. So I'm not sure if he gets the green light. He's coming off a bit. He was a little bit banged up the other day. If he gets the green light, maybe we'll see him tomorrow. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.